turn and find the page on the packet. Today, two considerations on a conversation. Conversation we had on this Friday morning between our Lord Jesus Christ and Pilate. There were several times when our Lord had a sacred conversation. One of them was when he spoke to the apostles, or twelve of them. He said, Who do men say the Son of Man is? What do the people say? What do the blogs say? What does the alternative media say? What does the mainstream media say? What does everybody have to say about who the Son of Man is? Well, some say it's John the Baptist. Others say it is Elias. Others say it's one of the prophets. And then our Lord Jesus Christ said to twelve men, Whom do you say that I am? One of them gave the answer. And that answer, it depends on our salvation. One of them gave an answer and he said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's what I say. What do you say, Peter, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, Jude, and Judas? Whom do you twelve men? I want to know what you say. Whom do you say the Son of Man is? And whom do you say that I am? They were afraid to speak. What if they said the wrong answer? But one of them was bold that day. And he said, Thou art the Christ. And then what did he say to that man? Blessed art thou, Simon bar Yonah, Simon the son of John, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to thee, but my Father who is in heaven. The Father revealed to the heart of Simon, and that day he would cease to be Simon, and he would become the rock. He would become Kephas. He would become the rock. He would become Peter. So important was his personal response that our Lord Jesus Christ would say to him, Thou art Peter. You are no longer Simon. You are now Peter the rock. And upon this rock, I will build my entire church. Now, here we must understand, personal conversations are somewhat important. Many people say today, the Blessed Virgin Mary said, she said that if you want to get out of this crisis, the Holy Father, Simon Peter, Caiaphas, Francis, who is now in Rome, I might go to door, watching some old soccer games, if you can't watch the one we're going on right now. Simon Peter must say, Thou art the Christ. I'm not Simon Peter. It doesn't depend on me. I'm not the Pope. All I can do is pray and go about my business and wait until the Pope decides. To listen. But was that the only one that was asked? The Lord Jesus Christ only asked that question, whom do you say that I am? Did he only know? One day he was standing before Pilate, and it was this morning of Good Friday. And he spoke to Pilate. And Pilate it was accused of him, it was accused of being a king. And so, therefore, he said, Art thou a king then? Says Pilate. They say, You're a king. And the Lord of the Christ responds, or before that, he says, Do you say this of yourself? Why do you ask about me being a king? Do you say this of yourself? Or have others told you about me? 
He's asking the same question of Pilate that he asked the 12 men. Was history affected by the response of Simon Peter? Oh, yes, it was. Because one day an angel appeared to a 15 year old most beautiful girl. And he asked her, Will thou be mother of God? Will you accept to give God humanity? She said, Fiat. That was an important conversation. She said, let it be done unto me according to thy word. And if she didn't answer yes, I am damned. And you are damned. And we are all damned. It was an important conversation. And it was personal. Do you marry? Are you ready to be a mother of sorrows? Are you ready to accept those men that will kill your son? as if they are your son? Are you ready to have a son who is going to be the man of sorrows? Are you ready to have your heart pierced with a lance and a sword? Are we? You don't have to say yes. She was not forced to say yes. But she said yes, and we have hope. And 30 years later, 31 years later, a fisherman, the first thing we know about that wise and great fisherman, one of the greatest hearts God ever made, that wise man saw Christ perform miracles. He saw him bring fish into his boat. And he said, depart from me, for I am a sinful man. He was wise. He knew that that was his boat and he had a lot of fish. He think he could sell more at the market? Make a lot of money for the Zebedee Fishing Company? Buy a new boat, new nets? It was goodness and innocence. It was the power of God that made the fish come upon his boat. And that boat is owned by a sinner. That boat is owned by a weak man. He is not worthy of having any of those fish on his boat. And the very wise Simon said, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man. And the Lord said, No, follow me. I will make you a catcher of men. Peter said, Yes. The Holy Mother of God said, Yes. And we have hope. We're the only ones asked the question. On this day, Pilate is asked the question. He's not even a Jew. In case we're wondering, he will make it clear, and the Holy Ghost will record it. And he says, therefore, are you really the king of the Jews? And Jesus responded, Dost thou say this thing of thyself, or have others told thee of me? And Pilate responds, Am I a Jew? Am I a Catholic? Am I a believer? I don't know your religious stuff. And there are many, many men today who call themselves atheists, who call themselves a non-religious men, who say they're just, they're not Jews, they're not Catholics. Our Lord Jesus Christ asked the question to every single man, woman, and child that ever reached the age of reason. Whom do you say that I am? It's an important question. And it wasn't just important for the Holy Mother of God. It wasn't just important for Simon Peter. He asked me the question. He asked you the question. He asked atheists the question. He asked the Hindus and Muslims the question. He asked the Satanists the question. They say, are you really the king of the Jews? Are you really the king of this world? Are you really the creator? 
Is you really found a holy church? Are you really the only way you came to heaven? Are you? Is this something you read in the blogs? Is it something you studied in university? Is it an interesting subject for you? Because you like to study comparative religions. Do you say this because of that? Do you say this of yourself? Or because of all that? Because I don't care what they say in the comparative religion class. I don't care what they say in the blogs. I don't care what they say in the conservative movement. <coughs> I don't care what traditional Catholics have to say. I want to know. Do you say this of yourself? And what does Pilate respond? My Jew? Why are you asking me? Your own people and the chief priests have handed you over to me. It's not my problem. I'm not the Pope. It's not my problem. I'm not the Bishop. It's not my problem. I'm not the Superior of the Society of St. Pius X. It's not my problem. I'm not the head of the family. It's not my problem. I'm not a soldier. It's not my problem. I'm not a fireman. It's not for me to put out fires and carry people out of houses that are on fire. It's a problem of everybody else. I pay my taxes. Let them take care of the problem. And so they speak. My kingdom is not of this world, says our Lord to Pilate. And he says to the atheists, and he says to the Catholics. Because now there's not much difference. Are you really different from the atheists? Are you different from the Hindus? Are you different from the Muslims? Are you different from the modernists? Really? Do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, His Holy Church, His Holy Faith? Because it is in your blood and because you cannot be without Him? Or is it what other people have to say? What your favorite author speaks? What do you say? What do you have to say about me? Pilate doesn't know what to say. And so he says a second time the question, you should always investigate. And if you're not sure, you should always investigate more. Remember, you shouldn't operate on doubt. You need to be sure. And so he asks again, so are you really a king? Art thou really a king? Art thou really a king? I don't know. Art thou really a king? You gotta keep investigating. You gotta be sure. And our Lord says, not the Holy Ghost, revealing to the heart of Simon Peter, but Christ himself, the king, stands in front of every atheist. He stands in front of every fake Catholic. He stands in front of every soul. And he says, To Jesus, thou sayest it, I am king. I have shown you my kingship so many times in life. You live today because of my kingship. I am the reason there's air in your body. I am the reason there's food on your table. I am the reason you have health. I am the reason of your mind and your heart. I am the reason of all things you have in my kingship. Dodicis. Rex Umengo. I am a king. Thou sayest it. And for this was I born. And for this came I into this world. That I might bear testimony unto the truth. Whoever is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate, I don't care about your political aspirations. I don't care about those people out there that are really upset. I'm talking to you. Do you want to be of the truth? Hear my voice. 
It is said in sacred scripture, when Christ comes, he shall come as lightning, even from the east unto the west. Christ will always speak, and it shall be loud enough to be heard by all men. All hear his voice like lightning from east unto west. Even in our age of darkness, in our age of lies, God will make sure that I can hear the truth. And Pilate hears it from the truth himself. And like a modern wise man, what does he do? Quit as very house. What is truth? And he turns his back on it. The Bishop Sheen says, What is truth? He stands in the presence of truth. Now does this conversation, this personal conversation with a pagan, not a Jew, with a pagan, not a Catholic, and one who is not responsible for the death of Christ, and in case we are not to be confused about it, Pilate, and what does Jesus Christ say to Pilate a little bit later on? You have no power over me, just in case you thought you did. And those who handed me over to you, that is, those wicked priests of the Catholic Church, that wicked Pope, and those wicked faithful who call themselves members of my true religion, they are the ones that have handed me over to you. Why is the Church in trouble today? Because of Catholics. That's the reason. Hillary not responsible. Soros is not responsible. The Rothschilds are not responsible for the crisis in our church today. And they are not responsible for the churches being closed. And they are not responsible for the crucifixion that is happening to our holy church. They are the arm of God raised up against us because we have denied him in our hearts. Because we don't really believe. But the 50s are wonderful. You don't remember, but five days ago, it was Palm Sunday. You were too little back then. But I remember. Everybody praised him. They thought he was so wonderful back in the 50s, before Vatican II. Everything was great. We all held palms in our hands. We all praised him. Everybody was at Mass on Sundays. It was beautiful. It really was. You don't remember, you get you down. I remember how wonderful it was five days ago. And why are you crucifying him today? If you remember so well. Why are you going to that modernist Mass? Why? Are you not ready to die for Christ? Why are you not standing for the truth? Why are you afraid? Why are you not speaking out? Maybe your memory is not as good as you think. Maybe Palm Sunday wasn't as wonderful as they said it was. Maybe the 50s weren't so great. It's an important conversation. Right now, Lord Jesus Christ is asking the pilots of the world. Now, what does it say in our Apostles' Creed? Jesus Christ died on the cross. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. Not under Caiaphas, not under Annas. He has suffered under Pontius Pilate. Because it wasn't for the mediocre, worthless man who doesn't know what truth is, but asks lots of questions, there would be no crucifixion. It's an important conversation, and the trouble with this conversation is, unlike the Holy Mother, and unlike our beloved Simon Peter, he gave the wrong answer. And so what happens? He walks away. And then he asked our Lord a little bit later, don't you know about the power put to death? He comes back a little later, 
And he asked a question that many are asking now. Where do you come from? Because he heard that he's God. And he became a mighty Tinui, says the sacred scripture. He was greatly afraid because he heard that Jesus Christ was God. And many souls, wait a minute, this man is God. I don't want to be the condemner of God. So he comes back to him and says, What do you do? Where are you from? Are you really from heaven? Are you really God? Are you really the one that performed the miracles for my centurions? Are you really the one that did all these great things? And Jesus tachebat. And Jesus was silent. And Jesus did not answer. He asked an important question, just like Herod would ask a little bit later. So many questions. He does not answer. The truth spoke to him. He turned his back on it. Now he's got more questions. So many people have more questions. Do your research. This is not a time of research. It's a time of Veronica. It's time to take a veil. Visit Christ on the way to the cross. It's a time to go collect your chickens' eggs. Like Simon. And to be captured against your will. To carry a cross behind our Lord. It was a good day for a fool to be a fool. The great fool Simon, the Cyrenian, on his way to collect eggs from his chickens. Too stupid to wait for all the crowd to pass by. But if there is envy in heaven, it's of him. Because our Lord said, Take up your cross and follow me. So many great saints took it up. Simon was just going to collect eggs from his chickens. It was time to get the chickens' eggs. And there was a big crowd of angry people in the way. And he was dumb, and he was stupid. And he was a fool. But it was a good day to be dumb and a stupid fool. Excuse me, I give my chickens. Excuse me, I give my chickens. The centurion said, You just volunteered, you idiot. Why can't you take down the thousands of people that are here that want to see him die? I'm just going to get my eggs. I'm just working 24-7. I'm just an average guy. You just volunteered. You're carrying the cross behind our Lord. The other must carry it symbolically. He really carried the cross of Christ. He was on his way to get some eggs. Drizzle East tells us that on this day, this Good Friday, after Simon put down the cross, this afternoon, he went back to collect his eggs. They were of many colors. From this we get the tradition of painting the Easter egg. Because of Simon the Serenian. Carry the cross behind our love. It's a good day to be Simon. It's a good day to be a Pharisee like Nicodemus. Cowards. But the day that coward received strength. And the day that coward, what did he do? He demanded the body of Jesus. He took the myrrhs and aloes and he brought them to the body of Jesus. And a rich man, Christ had no use for rich men. They were to be a rich man. For Joseph of Arimathea, he also, the rich man, went to Pilate and said to her, demanding the body of Jesus. And he was the one who laid him in a tomb that had never been used. And Nicodemus was the one to first anoint his body. And Simon was the one to carry a cross. And Veronica took a veil and wiped his face. Imagine they were a day late. Now this is the most important conversation that our Lord Jesus Christ has with Pilate. And he thinks about what? Himself. That's our problem. In the battle, we think about ourselves. That's what Pilate does. Why are you not answering me? Why are you not answering me? Do you not know that I have the power to save you? The power to put you to death? 
We think we're very powerful, we're mediocre fools. We think we're very important, we're mediocre fools. Well, you know, Lord, but if you don't have me, you can't win. If you don't have me, there's no hope. Mediocre fools. Then our Lord responds, you do not have any power over me, as we're given you from above. They who had me over you have committed the greater sin. In any case, while it is very important, the conversation that is had by the Holy Mother of God, she said yes. Simon Peter said yes. How many times have we said no? We must be sorry for the time that Christ has asked us, Whom do you say that I am? And we have given the wrong answer. Because of expediency and because of fear, because of our own foolishness, and that's the grace to give the right answer. We'll go here now to the solemn collects, the nine collects of the church, and continue with this massive